Hi everyone, my name is Khushi Sharma and welcome to this walkthrough. In this video, we're exploring more on Stargate APIs. Along with that, we'll also see how we can use the official Stargate Cassandra Postman workspace to share and collaborate on Stargate APIs, collections and environments. So let's get started with this video. Let's talk about what is Stargate before diving in deep into the Postman collections. Stargate is an open source data API gateway which turns Apache Cassandra into web APIs. It is deployed as a query coordination proxy in between your apps, functions, microservices and your database. Now, what do we mean by developer freedom of choice with Stargate? Let's understand that. Now, we can use Stargate to integrate Cassandra scale into our apps, functions and services as web APIs over HTTP using both driver connections and HTTP connections. Stargate presents Cassandra SQL as several popular web APIs including gRPC, GraphQL, REST and Document API. Let's understand more of that. The JSON Document API supports both schema-less and JSON schema-driven approaches for document DB workloads with Cassandra. However, gRPC and GraphQL provides near-to-near -near native performance for app, function, or service integration. GraphQL is fast, and it helps avoid the over- or under-fetching of data, which is typical in REST systems. REST is great for front-end JavaScript, Jamstack developers, or even when you don't have a supported driver for gRPC client for your language. You can learn more about how to choose the right API for your project in the blog post linked below in the video description. Now, let's start with the Postman collection. Firstly, let's go to Postman and here, let's search for Datastack Target. As we can see, here is the Stargate Cassandra collection. Let's click this to expand more details. And here we are. This is the official Stargate Cassandra workspace available on Postman. Uh, the link for the same is also available in the description box below. Now, before we go ahead and start testing this, let's also do a quick walkthrough of the whole Postman workspace. Please note that this is the admin view for now. Moving forward, we'll see how to actually use it. Now, we can use this Postman workspace to share, collaborate on Stargate APIs, collections, environments. This workspace also provides the NoSQL database developers with white column document and key value database models using Postman, Apache Cassandra, and Stargate. Here you can see we have different collections available, including specific examples of the Document API, GraphQL API, gRPC API, and REST API as well. Each of these collections also consists of specific requests, which we'll explore further. Uh, please note that the Document API library is in active development. So for now, we'll just use the Document My World example. Now we also have another section for environments. Now an environment is just a set of variables we use in our Postman requests. We also use this to group related set of values together and we can also manage access to shared Postman data. Now it's very important to select the correct environment because it will consist of a specific set of values which will be used by the Postman requests pertaining to some specific examples used in the collection. For example, here we have two environments, Astra API environment and the OSS API environment. For this walkthrough, we will only be using the Astra API environment. Although here the default values will work, but we can even override these values if needed for any certain case. We can ignore the other environments for now. The only other one we'll need is the Stargate OSS API environment and that only if we want to run Stargate in Cassandra locally. Otherwise, we will be only using the Stargate Astra API environment in this walkthrough. Now, to move forward, we would have to fork these collections into our own workspace. Now, just in case, if you are wondering how to create your own workspace, let me show you how we can do that. We'll go to the section named Workspaces and we'll click on Create Workspace. Now, here we can put any name to the workspace. I'll put Datastax Stargate Test. And in the summary, I'll just add, this is a text collection run. With respect to visibility, you can choose who do you want to access this workspace. 
I'll choose personal for now, which means only I would be able to access it. You can choose accordingly. And now we'll click on create workspace. And now as you can see, my new workspace is created and this is personal, which means only I would be able to access it. Now let's get started with the Postman collections. Now we are back on the Stargate Cassandra workspace. Let's try forking these collections into our personal workspace that we just created. To do that, we'll click on the three dots here and we'll click on create a fork. We'll let the fork label be Khushi Sharma's fork and we'll select the workspace as the new workspace that we just created, which is data stack target test. Now we'll click on fork collection. And now, as we can see, I'm in my personal workspace and the Stargate document API collection is forked here with the label Khushi Sharma's fork. Now, since the Postman collections can be accessed in the Stargate Cassandra workspace hosted on Postman, we can either run the collections and export them to use in our own application or we can run them from here. Right now, I'm on the Stargate documentation link. This will be available in the description box below. And I'm on the section Tooling Resources. Now, we have already forked the document API collection using the Postman workspace. This time, let's try forking the REST API collection. We'll click here which says Run in Postman. Make sure while you are doing this, you are selecting the button which says With Astra Environment. Because for this walkthrough, we will be using only this. Let's click here. Now we are redirected to a different window which says Fork Collection into your workspace. Let's click on Fork Collection. Just like before, we'll let the Fork label be as it is. And on the workspace, we'll select the personal workspace we just created, which is Data Stack Stargate Test. Let's click here. And as we can see, we are again in our personal workspace. And this time, the Stargate REST API has been forked. Now, with the REST API, we have also got the Stargate Astra API environment forked here in the environment section. We can also do the same from the Stargate Cassandra workspace following the same method we used to fork the document API. Now that we have forked all the four collections, that is the document API, the GraphQL API, the gRPC API, and the REST API collection in our Astra API environment, we are good to go with the next steps of actually running these collections. Now it's important to realize that Stargate runs alongside a Cassandra cluster in between our application and Cassandra database. We highly recommend using Astra DB since Stargate is already set up and it runs as a managed service. Postman environments are also provided for us in order to run on Astra DB in the team space. So let's try using this as a service on Datastack's Astra DB, where both Cassandra and Stargate are automatically set up for us. To move forward, we'll go on Datastack's Astra dashboard. You can easily sign up or log in on Datastack's Astra using the link mentioned in the description box below. Once we are here on the dashboard, we'll go to the databases section and we'll click on create database. We can enter the basic details, including the name and the key space name. Now next, we'll have to select a provider and a region. You can select your region accordingly. I'll choose Asia Pacific Mumbai India. And as you can see, I'm on the current plan, which is free for now. Let's click here, which says create database. And now our database has been successfully created. It's in the pending state, which means the token is getting generated for now. Here are our database details. Now we can download this whole CSV, which will have all our secure token details. Now let's go to the database by clicking here. Now it's still in the pending state. So let's wait for it to get active and we'll move further. As we can see, our Stargate database is active. So let's move further. Now in order to set up access control for the new key spaces, we'll go to our Astra DB console and we'll select organization settings from here. From here, we'll click on role management. Now we can see we have custom roles available according to our databases. In our case, we just created a Stargate named database. So we'll go and edit this particular role. We'll click on select all which will select all the organization permissions. Now here we'll click on apply permissions to all databases in this organization. 
which will again select all the 45 permissions. Let's click on edit role to save. Please make sure that this is strictly for development and instructional purposes and this should never be used in production. Now once we're done with that, we'll again go back to our database and we'll create a few more key spaces according to our Stargate collection. To do that, we'll move over to the key spaces section and we'll click here on add key space. Now let us create a my world key space. And as we can see, we have successfully created a key space named my world. Now similarly, we have created three more key spaces named KS1, users key space and library. We'll need all of these in our postman collections. Now that we're done with this, let's go back to postman. Now that we're back on Postman, we can see that in our Stargate Astra API environment, we have to update some variable values. Let's do that first. Now with respect to Astra DB ID, we can get this value from our Astra DB console. So let's get back to our Astra dashboard. And here in the databases section, we can find the database ID on the side of our database name. In our case, our database name is Stargate and this is our database ID. Let's copy this and let's change this value here. Please note that both the initial value and the current value would have to be changed with the value that we just copied. Please make sure that you copy the database ID and not the data center ID which is available on the database detail page. The DB ID would only be available on the dashboard where all the databases are listed. Now, with respect to the Astra DB region, we would be able to get this in our database detail page on the dashboard. This is our database region. So let's copy this and paste it in our environment. Now, auth token is the same token that we downloaded when we were creating our database. So in this case, we would have to open the downloaded file and we would have to copy the auth token from there. This was the file that I downloaded when I was creating the database. And as you can see, this is the token label and this is our token. Let's copy this and let's paste it here. Now, if the workspace you're forking into is not private, if it is another team or public workspace, make sure you're maintaining your database access token under current value and not initial value so that you don't expose the value to others in a team or a public workspace. Once we have updated all our variable values, let's save our environment. Now let's start with the document API. This target document API, it modifies in queries data stored as unstructured JSON documents in collections. Now because the document API uses schema-less data, no data modeling is required. With respect to document API, we're using the my world example for this particular collection. Now let's start by running the document API. Now this particular collection has different folders. Each folder consists of a group of specific requests. For example, the authentication folder here has a post request to create an auth token. However, the authentication folder and the create schema folder, both of these are specific to target OSS only. So we won't be running this. Instead, we'll try running the retrieve schema folder. Here we can see we have a namespace named as get all namespaces. Now this is a get request and this is how the request looks like. Make sure you have selected your environment here as the Stargate Astra API environment. We can see we do not have any query parameters. We do have the headers for this request and we also have tests for this request. Now to run this, we'll click on this button which says send. Now this sends our request and we would be able to see the response here. Now as we can also see, the test results worked fine, which means this request is working just fine in our case. Now let's try inserting some data. Now here we can see we have a post request which is named as post nonsense stuff and this is how the request looks like. Let's try sending this request and let's see what response do we get. Here we see now that we have inserted our data and the test results also work fine. Let's insert some more data. Let's try a put request here. Let's send this request. 
because the test results work fine, we are able to insert the data Joey. Now let's try retrieving this data. Let's try running the request get document Joey. This is a get request and now we'll send this. Now as we can see, we're able to retrieve the data related to document ID Joey that we just inserted in our last request. Similarly, we can delete the data. We can also delete the schema. However, delete schema is also specific to Stargate OSS only. Now that we have an idea of how document API collection works, let's try and run all these requests simultaneously. To that, we'll go to the Stargate document API overview page. We'll click the runner here which says run. Now here we can customize the running selections. We'll untick the first three requests which is specific to Stargate OSS only. We'll do the same with the last one also. Now let's click on run Stargate document API my world. And now as we can see in the first iteration itself, all our requests have worked fine because all our tests has passed. Now that the document API is done, let's start with the REST API. The target REST API example is named as Users Key Space. It contains a sample schema and queries for Stargate's REST API using the key space as Users Key Space and table as Users. Now, in order to use the REST API, we should create schema that defines at least one key space and even one table that will store the data. So let's get started with that. Again, we have different folders. We won't be using the authenticate request since it's specific to Stargate OSS only. Let's start running a few requests from the create schema folder. Let's see if we can create a table users. This is a post request and this is how the request looks. Let's try sending this. Since all our tests are successful, the table users has been created. Now similarly, we can create uh, different columns. We can create different table indexes. This is with respect to create schema only. Let's try a retrieving schema. So what if we try a get request which says get a listing of all tables with defined columns. Here also we do not have any query parameters. So let's try sending this. And this is the response that we get. We get the data of all the tables defined with their specific columns. Here we can see a table users that we just created. Similarly, we can retrieve other details we can retrieve columns, we can retrieve table indexes. Now with respect to this folder, we have different requests in which we can insert specific data and we can retrieve that data as well. And the next that comes up is deleting data and schema. Now we'll try to run all these requests collectively. We'll try the runner. Let's click on run stargate. And here also in the first iteration, all of our requests are working fine. All our tests have passed successfully, which means the REST API is also working fine with respect to the example. Now let's start with the GraphQL API. This target GraphQL API, it has two modes, schema first and SQL first. The SQL first approach, it directly translates the SQL tables into GraphQL types, mutations and queries. Whereas the schema first approach, it allows you to create idiomatic GraphQL types, mutations and queries in a manner familiar to GraphQL developers. The target GraphQL API is implemented to easily modify and query our table data using GraphQL types, mutations and queries with any Cassandra deployment. Now let's get started with the collection. Let's send a post request which says create a user defined type called address. This is how the request looks like. Let's send this and let's see what response do we get. Here, create type is true, which means this particular UDT has been created. Now let's also try creating two tables, book and reader. This is also a post request. Since all our tests for this request are also successful, now we have created two tables, book and reader. We can also create indexes. We can also create tables with a map and patch. Now let's try retrieving this schema. Let's try getting all these tables that we created. Now this is the response that we get, which is the data of all the tables that we have created. Now let's try inserting data into this table. Let's try running this request. 
which says inserting reader with user defined type. Now here we inserted a reader named Allen Ginsberg successfully with the UDT. Let's try inserting a book Jane Austen. Now this request was also successful. That means we have successfully inserted our data. Now similarly, we can retrieve some data, we can delete data and we can also delete the schema. Now we'll run the runner. Now for the GraphQL API as well, all our requests work fine. In the first iteration itself, we have been able to run all the requests successfully. Now that we are done with the document API, REST API and the GraphQL API, let's move to our last bit for this walkthrough, which is the Stargate gRPC API. gRPC is a modern open source remote procedure called framework. It enables client and server applications to communicate transparently and makes it easier to build connected systems. The Stargate gRPC API is implemented to create language specific queries using SQL with any Cassandra deployment. Now, since this is still in beta, a few extra steps will be needed to run this particular collection. Now, let's start running our gRPC API. Now, once we fork this API to our personal workspace, it's possible the protobuf definitions will get lost. So, when examining a specific test, for example, create table, we look for the telltale which says select a method. Here, there are already some predefined methods, but we'll try to change the service definition. Now, from here, we can choose to import a dot proto file. These proto files are already linked in the blog post mentioned in the description box below. We can just download these files locally, or we can also use their URLs in Postman. Let's click on import a proto file. We'll choose a file which we downloaded locally. Now, as you can see, we successfully uploaded the stargate.proto file from our local system. We'll make sure not to change the file names or dislocate them in different directories as there are import statements that cross-reference the two files. We'll click on next. Now, this will prompt us to create an API which we have typically named as stargate grpc. Let's click here which says create a new API. Now we have successfully created our API. Let's move over to the API section. And yay, now we have got a Stargate gRPC API. In the definition, we have two files, Stargate Proto and Query Proto. Let's move back to our collection. Let's move back to our test. Now we'll simply choose our methods from this API. We'll choose the execute query method I will also make sure to click the lock icon as TLS encryption does need to be enabled. Now that we're done, let's click on invoke and let's see if this is working. And this is working just fine. Now, since this is not a collection, we'll run tests individually. Now we'll move to our next test, which is insert data. Let's try selecting a method. Here we'll choose the execute query method and we'll again click on invoke. Again, this is working fine. We're getting the OK code. Now let's try inserting batch data. Now when we're inserting batch data, we won't select the normal method that we were using till now, which was insert query. We'll use the execute batch method. At times, the Postman collection runner may need to be reminded of which service definition from the gRPC protobuf a given test call is using. So we can associate them and accept the default association also. Let's invoke this. And again, we're getting the status code as OK, which means all these methods are working just fine. And that is how we're also done with our gRPC API. With Stargate, it's easy to integrate your applications, services, functions to tap into the scale, reliability and performance of Cassandra over HTTP. Stargate modernizes building and managing real time applications with Apache Cassandra by offering developers SQL over familiar web APIs like gRPC, REST, and GraphQL. It also provides developer with a schema-less JSON document API that transforms Cassandra into a document database. It also improves our cluster performance with independently deployable and scalable services coordinator and storage. Stargate is easy to deploy in dev mode, which auto-configures a Cassandra cluster for desktop development. It's also deployable to bare metal, VMs, Docker, JKE, EKS, Cassandra, Datastax Enterprise. 
the fastest way to get started is astradb which sets it up for you automatically on the 80 gb monthly free plan so this was it for this particular demo thank you so much for watching this walk through in case you have any other questions or doubts please feel free to reach out to us via the comment section below see you later bye bye